Here you are, Gerald. I think that should do the trick. Thank you very much, Dr. Watson. Uh, I must confess that I can't for the life of me think why you should need a reference from me. After all, you are a registered practitioner. Well, that is what the advertisement in the paper demands. Here, see it for yourself. Uh, wanted for short period is services of medical man. Necessary he be of strong physique and steady nerves. Must be entomologist. Coleopterist preferred. Apply in person 77 Brook Street immediately. A reference from other medical man essential. <laughs> what a curious advertisement. Well, I wish you well with your application. But if you get offered the post, I advise you to go into the position quite thoroughly before accepting it. <laughs> Good luck, Gerald. present the stories of Sherlock Holmes. Tonight, the man who loved the people. I hadn't seen young Gerald Hamilton for some years. I'd taken quite an interest in his career, simply because he was a distant relative and the only member of my family who had decided to take up medicine. I knew he'd done quite well and passed all his finals of flying colors. He was ambitious and was intent upon specializing, but was wise enough to get in as much general practice as possible beforehand. A strong, handsome young man, he was particularly interested in entomology, believing there was great need for medical research and the spreading of diseases by insects. Of course, I gave him a splendid character reference when he applied for a post with Lord Lynchmere at 77 Brook Street. We neither of us were to know what a trail of bizarre events were to start with this initial meeting. You've come in answer to my advertisement, Dr. Hamilton, then. Do you fulfill the conditions which are laid down? I think so, yes, sir. It would seem satisfactory from your references. Have you ever been exposed to imminent physical danger? I can't say that I have. But I believe I would react with promptness and keep my head in such circumstances. Mm, you certainly appear strong enough. So far, so good. And, uh, now, what about beetles? Uh, beetles, sir? Yes, you say you're interested in entomology. Can you talk at all about beetles? Well, I, I cannot profess to have anything original to say upon that creature. But I have a small collection for study. And I did contribute a small medical article regarding him in the Journal of Entomological Science. No, you were a collector. Splendid, quite splendid. You were the very man for my purpose. You must have heard of my brother-in-law, Sir Thomas Rossiter. One of the greatest authorities on the insect. You've not met him? No, sir. No, but you shall, you shall. I must tell you that my sister, Lady Elaine Rossiter, is abroad at the moment, and I have to stay with Sir Thomas over this next week. He's interested in nothing but his recent studies on the South American beetle. It will greatly aid me if you will accompany me to Delamere Court. Pangborn. That is my brother-in-law's country residence. Would that be convenient? If it falls within the scope of my duties, yes, of course. But with respect, sir, you have yet to outline this duty. Oh, yes, yes, quite, quite. I, I should require, Dr. Hamilton, that you put yourself absolutely at my disposal. For as long as you're with me, and particularly this coming week, you must remain by my side. You must promise to do, without question, whatever I may ask you to do, however unreasonable it may appear to be. <laughs> that is asking a good deal. Could you not elaborate a little? Unfortunately not, as I do not know what turn matters will take. You may be sure that I shall not ask anything criminal. <laughs> you may well be proud to have been concerned in a good work if it all ends happily. It sounds extremely vague. Uh, may I ask the turn? Yes, 20 pounds a day. 20 pounds a day? Yes. Lord Lynchmere, you may rely upon me. No, no, no. Good, then the matter is settled. Uh, consider yourself engaged as from this very moment. I will have a necessary contract of employment drawn up, should you desire it. Uh, meanwhile, let it be a gentleman's agreement. Uh, shall we shake hands on it, Dr. Hampton? By all means. By all means. It was in the middle of the next week that I received a letter from General Hamilton explaining his circumstances. It was a very interesting and somewhat puzzling letter. And I read some of it aloud to Sherlock Holmes. It really is a most strange household. 
And as each day passes, I ask myself just what I'm doing here. Lord Lynchmere is pleasantly eccentric, but his brother-in-law, Sir Thomas Rossiter, is quite extraordinarily mad. He is a singularly ugly man, standing some six feet six inches, and is thin but wiry. His craggy features are topped by a domed head of strange appearance. His forehead appears to be in a state of continual movement, sometimes twitching, and at other times the muscles seem to rotate. Most alarming, and I have never encountered this condition before. As a medical man, have you? <laughs> I can't say that I have. Most interesting. Carry on, Watson Wheatmore. Mm, uh, my duties are extremely vague. I am simply a companion to Lord Lynchmere, accompanying him wherever he goes, and even sleeping in the adjacent dressing room for his suite, so that I am within call should he wake in the night. Why he requires a doctor to attend him, I don't know as he seems in very good health. Uh, for some hours every day, I talk to Sir Thomas, usually in connection with his work. But there is a strange atmosphere in this house, Dr. Watson. It radiates a sinister feeling. I, it would not be over-fanciful to say that the place smells of evil. How long I shall manage to stand it, I cannot say. How I would like you to visit here and see for yourself. But I need the money, and I shall endure it for as long as I can. Hmm. Well, that's the main body of his news. Seems very odd, doesn't it? Yes, yes, indeed. Well, I've heard of Sir Thomas Rossiter, of course. I think he's mentioned in all the modern works of entomology. There was a Rossiter who was a triple murderer. Well, I sincerely hope there's no family connection, Holmes. Yes, yes. So do I. <laughs> Another two weeks passed, and there was no more news from Gerald. And then I came down to breakfast one morning to find a telegram propped up by the coffee pot. Holmes had finished his meal and was puffing away at his first pipe of the day when I opened it. Good gracious. Oh, something serious must have happened, Holmes. This is a telegram from Gerald Hamilton. He's in trouble. Listen. Please come Delamere Court, Pangbourne, soon as you can. Murder imminent. Bring Holmes. Despair for sanity, Hamilton. Yes, well, what do you make of that, Holmes? No more or no less than what it says, Watson. Lord Lynchmere warned the young man of danger from the very beginning. Uh, shall you go down? Yes, of course. Will you accompany me? Oh, by all means. I've already looked up the times of the trains and discovered that the best inn in the district is the Drover's Armour. <laughs> How could you have anticipated this, Holmes? Uh, the postmark on the telegram is Pangborn. It's marked urgent. Must be a cry for help. Only your young prodigy could have sent it. Shall we hurry and catch the 9.45, Watson? The journey from Paddington to Pangborn was uneventful. The train was quite crowded and we had little opportunity to talk. We took a donkey cart from Pangborn Station to Delamere Court and the driver of the cart seemed ill-disposed to chatter. As we clattered our way over the uneven dirt road that dwindled into a single track, I looked around the bleak countryside. The skies had clouded over and threatened rain. The leaves of the trees seemed to be grey and not green. The foliage of the hedges was dank and gave off an unpleasant smell. It was indeed a most depressing vista. And Delamere Court, grey-stoned, bleak and depressing, peered from the hillside with gloomy foreboding. What a miserable looking district, Holmes. Not a great deal of cheer about it, is there? That, I take it, is the home of Sir Thomas Rossiter. Yeah, he must be. Is that Delamere Court driver? Uh, aye, that be it. I'll be dropping you at the drover's arms as we arrange. I ain't going to drive up to that place no matter how much he pays me. Oh, now, why should you say that? Because he's haunted, that's why. That place is haunted by the dead and by the undead. Do take my advice, stay clear of it. There's many who set their foot in there and never been seen again. Just be warned, stay clear. I will clear. Staying clear of Delamere Court was the last thing we had in mind. We signed in at the inn and immediately changed into our country boots and set out to walk across the fields to join the driveway of the estate. We were crunching our way towards the house when... <laughs> What the devil? Stay quite still, Watson. Make no attempt to take cover or move in any way. That shot was meant as a warning. And what may I ask are you two doing here? Can you not read the signs? This is newly prosecuted. Turn immediately and leave my land. You are Sir Thomas Rossiter? And what if I am? 
I am Sherlock Holmes, and this is Dr. Watson. We've come to visit Lord Lynchmere. Well, this is my then. The one any strangers here. I don't care who you are. Name Sherlock Holmes doesn't give you any r- more rights than anyone else. No, 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 I agree. On the other hand, the name Sir Thomas Rossiter does compel me to thank you for your book upon the Coleoptera. I found your chapter on the better-known species of British scarabai quite fascinating. Oh, it's a rare thing to meet a man who takes an intelligent interest in such matters. Uh, if you wish to speak to my brother-in-law, perhaps we could uh, discuss this matter on the way to the house. Oh, certainly, certainly. Uh, but surely this is Lord Lynchmere approaching. Ah, oh, yes, yes, it is. But uh, come, let's not bother about him. Now, what is your opinion upon the uh, nice cycle of the golden brown raspberry beetle? Holmes! Holmes! What is this? Uh, who are these men? Uh, Mr. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson called to see you. Uh, Mr. Holmes is about to give me his views on the La Perispa acid. Uh, please do not interrupt us. Now, you were saying, Mr. Holmes... Well, I've heard fast-running active creatures. Dr. Watson, <laughs> and you've brought Sherlock oh, Holmes. Oh, thank heaven for that. Thank heaven. Please, please promise you will stay with me. Please promise me that you will never leave my side. Promise... I was immediately caught up in the weird atmosphere. I sensed at once the unbalanced mental state of both the men who walked with us up the windswept drive. Sir Thomas Rossiter appeared only calm and reasoned when he was discussing his work. When talking about beetles, he was thoughtful and rational. On other subjects, he was quite distrait. As for Lord Lynchbeard, he seemed to sight himself with fear. Once inside the house, Sir Thomas made for his study with no word of explanation. Lynchmere took us through to the sitting room and offered us drinks. I, I know it's early, but I feel the need. I feel the need. Uh, will you join me? Uh, thank you, no. Uh, uh, not for me, thank you. Uh, uh, Lord Lynchmere, I feel I must explain our intrusion. The fact is that we've been sent for by my young friend and colleague, Dr. Gerald Hamilton. He seems to have been in some trouble. Hamilton, uh, Dr. Hamilton. Uh, well, yes, he, he isn't here. Not here. But you mean he is out at the moment? Yes, uh, since the morning, um, since um, this morning, early. He uh, he had some business to attend to today, so he asked me last evening if he could take the day off. I, I naturally gave him permission, and so he's out this morning. He's gone to London. Oh, this is extraordinary. He sent a telegram to us, urging us to come down here immediately. Oh, well, why would he have done so if he contemplated coming back to town? He could have seen us there. Yeah, I... I don't know. Believe me, I, I don't know. I'm most distressed by it all. Perhaps, uh, perhaps you will return this afternoon. Oh, please, you will stay to lunch, won't you? Uh, stay tonight, as long as you like. Oh, thank you, but we are comfortably housed at the Drover's Arms. Yeah, I will tend to feel like it. It would be a pleasure having visitors here. We wouldn't dream of imposing upon your hospitality. No, no trouble at all. Just let me... But I, 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 I do assure you, Lord. Uh, I yes. think we shouldn't be so churlish as to refuse an offer to stay in such a unique home, Watson. And after all, we do want to find Gerald Hamilton, don't we? Uh, well, I, uh, uh, well, uh, 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 yes, yes, I suppose you're right. Oh, Captain, Captain, you're right, sir. Yes, uh, please take a trap down the driver's arms and uh, bring the luggage for Mr. Holmes. Not to worry. Very good, sir. And uh, tell the maid to make up the bed in the room either side of mine. Very good, sir. Will that be all, sir? Yes. For the moment, yes. Thank you. Well, I, I cannot tell you how thankful I am that you've called, gentlemen. Most obliging of you to consider staying over until Dr. Hamilton gets back. I, I'm sure that he will not be long. But I, I still find the whole business most confusing, but naturally we want to do what is best for both you and him. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm afraid you may find things a trifle dull here. Sir Thomas hardly ever leaves his own room except to walk in the gardens and study the insects. It's a very large house. Does he live here alone? Even my sister Elaine is traveling abroad at the moment. She, she runs the house. There is some five servants. It's large but comfortable, providing you stay in the rooms that she has planned. Uh, no one dare venture into Sir Thomas' domain. Uh, there are some rooms that even servants are forbidden to enter. Uh, heaven knows what they're like inside. So would it be possible to see around the place? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, come, let me show you to your room. We were carefully shown over the house, seeing, I suspected, only what Lord Lynchmere wanted us to see. I could tell that Holmes was very intrigued. Although he kept up an endless stream of small talk with our host, he was noting every square inch of the rooms and corridors. 
Uh, that is the door that can never be opened. Uh, it leads into Thomas's private quarters. Uh, as for the rest, uh, well, it is at your disposal, gentlemen. Uh, certainly roomy. Uh, I hope I can find my way about. Uh, stay close to me. That is all I ask. Uh, my bedroom is here. Uh, yours, Dr. Watson, is this one. And on the other side, that is yours, Mr. Holmes. Uh, there are connecting doors to my own room, and I beg of you to leave them open tonight. I have a morbid fear of being alone, even when I'm sleeping. Uh, shall we return to the sitting room? Uh, there should be a pleasant fire there by now. Oh, we can talk quietly into lunch. Well, begging your pardon, the Lord. Hmm? But could yes. you please have a word with Cook about meals? Uh, I have to be changed now. She wants definite instructions. Yes. Oh, dear, dear. How tired me. I suppose I'll have to do so. Uh, oh, it's only a lame way here. Things would be so very, very different. Uh, will you please excuse me, gentlemen? Go down to the sitting room again. I, I will join you there in just... You, yes, yes, very well, Don't bother about us. We can find our way. Now, quickly, Watson. This may be our only chance to talk. Lord Lynchmere is going to stick to us like glue. Well, Holmes, what is going on here? I can't understand. I think it's very clear that Gerald Hamilton has not left this house. If that's the case, then he must be here somewhere and held against his will. We've just got to put up with all this quaintness until we can find him. But how? How will you do that if we're never left alone? Look, Uncle Lunch, stick at Lord Lynchmere's side. He's so scared that he's wearing himself out. Stay with him. Encourage him to relax. I shall make a thorough search and somehow or other get into Sir Thomas Rossiter's apartments. We well, think that he's been held in there, but why? No, well, in this house there could be many reasons. But I'm certain that he is here. Somewhere beyond that closed door he's been held prisoner. One doesn't like to think of what might be happening, but we must find him. Come, let's get back to the city. Uh, So, uh, so, my friend, you're awake. Good, good. What, what the devil is going on here? Oh, I'm sick, I'm punished. Why am I tied down like this? For oh, many reasons, yes. Very many reasons. One is so that you cannot protect that tiresome brother-in-law of mine who's always watching my every move. It's worse than my wife. Look, nothing to do with me. I'm only here to do my job. And your job will be over quite shortly. Oh, yes. You will not be needed after tonight. <laughs> but uh, meanwhile, I am anxious to try a small experiment. I am sure, with your interest in the South American Beatles, you will agree to this in the cause of science. I have a theory that the large red mountain of Dale thrives on human blood. In much the same way as each is draw blood. And so... Uh, you get away. Get, get away. You must be mad. I have many of them here. In this large glass container, I shall open your shirts. Oh! Yes. Anyway, she must be mad. Don't blast the things away. I remove the top, so. There, and now, end it. Take it upside down in your chest. There, the little ones will fall. Ah, yes, they have fallen onto your skin. Oh, they are confused. They run backwards and forwards over your flesh. This is poor thing, me. You're building it, Take it away. Oh, no, no. I have cords on either side of the glass container. The least cord I can fasten to your wrist. So, I add again here. Yeah, I have the glass case will now be secure. Experiment now begins. How long before they start to take your blood, I wonder. How long? I can't stand it! I can't stand it! I'm sorry, gentlemen. You have been disappointed. Dr. Hamilton has a return. I can't explain it, but... Perhaps in the morning there will be an explanation. Meanwhile, the only thing I can suggest is an early night, that's all. And uh, Sir Thomas, we've not seen him all day. He has food sent through to his quarters. He's more than happy to be alone with his work. May I suggest a nightcap? Uh, not for me. Oh, oh excuse me. As for the country air, I think your suggestion of retiring is a splendid one, Lord Lynchman. Then may I lead the way upstairs? Uh, uh, Rogers will put out the lamps. Uh, come this way, please. And, uh, oh, and please do remember to sleep with the communicating doors wide open, won't you? I simply loathe the feeling of being alone in the dark or 
If, if you hear anything, anything at all, however slight, then, then, then wake me. You will promise, won't you? Wake me if you hear anything during the night. Promise. Come. Come up with me. Watson, we can waste no more time. Come quietly now. Follow me. Fortunately, I packed a dark lantern with my things. Come this way. Holmes, Holmes. Where are we going? We're surely not outside. That's right. It's the only way. Careful. Now, the door. <laughs> What is this? I, I thought you said that Gerald must be held inside the house. He's in the cellar under the office of study. There is a large ventilated grill that must lead down into the cellar. It's something easy enough to remove. Come, see. Here, by the light of the lantern. There. Half covered by the ivy. That has got to be the place. Yes, I, I, I think you may be right, Holmes. But, uh, shine the uh, light downwards. Come on, right, Watson. Come on. Use the strength of yours. Get that grid up. Come on. It took us nearly 20 minutes with all our combined strength to ease the iron grill work away. A few minutes later, we were in the cellar unfastening the bonds that tied Gerald Hamilton to the table. Holmes threw the gas case that covered his chest to the ground. There. There. Are you all right? Yes. I think so. Well, let's get those loathsome creatures off your chest. What a horrible ordeal. It's, it's all right. It, harmless. Just one of Sir Thomas's illusions. Dr. Watson, Mr. Holmes, he's mad. So up there, he's breathing mad. Right, well, come along. Let's get you out of here. We'll get back to the driver's inn and call the police. No, 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 wait. There's still Lord Lynchmere. Yes. Yes, I was hired to protect him. He knows that his brother-in-law is dangerous. Yes, well, there's no time to wait. Come Let's get out of them into the house. They may still be time. Hurry now, both of you. Hurry. Careful. Softly now. Quiet. Right, now. Through here into my room. It leads to Lord Lynchmere's. Yes. I think it's all right. Yes, he's still asleep. Careful now. Wait. Listen, someone's coming. It's not it must be. Back, back into the shadows. See the lamp still burns on the table. Wait. Wait. It took four of us all our strength to overpower Sir Thomas Rossiter. The lamps were then lit and order restored. Rossiter lay back in a chair, his arms securely tied with a sash cord from the windows. One glance was enough to prove that he was a most dangerous maniac. Gerald Hamilton found his doctor's bag and administered an injection that took immediate effect. Later, downstairs, Lord Lynchmere explained. Uh, my poor brother-in-law is stricken with a disease. He comes from a stock which is deeply tainted with insanity. He has these periodical outbreaks in which he will attack anyone who seems to interfere with his work. We tried for years to conceal this. My sister has led a dreadful life and we realized that it could not continue. He grows worse each time. That's why I sent Elaine away and hired you, Hamilton. I needed protection and also a witness. A, a witness who was a doctor and could testify that Thomas is unbalanced and quite certifiable. We have had ample proof of that tonight. Thank heavens you came, Mr. Holmes. Now, Watson has been more help than I. It was quite easy to discover the layout of the house and realize there had to be a cellar beneath the study. Well, you had a dreadful ordeal, Hamilton. I sympathize completely. The fact is that I've never been able to bear beetles. I think it's time we went home. Listen again next Sunday to The Stories of Sherlock Holmes with Graham Armitage's Holmes and Kerry Jordan as Dr. Watson. <laughs>